Good Friday afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. Terry, we've done these. Mm -hmm. We still don't have a name, but no. it's just Terry and Jacob it's a, it's a work in progress. Yeah, we have a, many people behind the scenes working on a name right now. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we've put our entire news department on task. Um, we always love chatting with our viewers about mm -hmm. what's to come. Fortunately for us, for the most part, it's pretty nice around here, but there's a lot to talk about weather-wise and just seasonally speaking. Yeah, we have a jam-packed little uh, show here today. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think first and foremost, we need to touch upon the big story from last night and the still ongoing story of Hurricane Helene, now Tropical Storm Helene. Yes. Um, still spinning around uh, over parts of North Carolina and Tennessee. Um, and what a night last night, a devastating night for parts of yeah. the Gulf Coast. Absolutely. This is an incredible storm. There it is right there. It's obviously lost a lot of its tropical characteristics. Uh, you don't see like that distinct eye, that sort of thing. But check out how strong this was. This was a category four storm when it made landfall. We expected it to be a major hurricane and that is unfortunately what came to fruition right in the Appalachian Bay, right near Perry, Florida, about 11 p.m. last night. This is an area that up until last year had never seen a major hurricane hit them. Yeah, they had a Dahlia. Mm -hmm. And then this year they have another devastating hurricane. Yeah, and the thing, the thing that seems to be a trend with these things, and it's not a good trend, is it's intensifying just before landfall. Yeah. Um, as you saw with that last graph, it literally peaked as it was coming ashore as a Category 4 hurricane. Um, and now, of course, the center is uh, somewhere over nearing Nashville, and it's a, it's a much different storm. But yep. uh, still a lot to be said about... A lot of rainfall still happening, a lot yep. of tornado watches and warnings going on down there. So a very busy and uh, active day down there and throughout North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky. As these systems move inland, the threat that comes along with them kind of changes a little bit. You just saw there the tornado threat. A couple years ago, we had a few remnants of mm -hmm. storms roll through. That was one of our busier tornado years. Also, the freshwater flooding. Storm surge was devastating. And I, I don't yeah. think we truly have a, a real picture. We're still getting Not cruise to, to the beaches and to the coastline of what happened in Florida. But then the freshwater flooding, the rainfall flooding, is going to be catastrophic. I saw our chief meteorologist, uh, Eric Fisher, tweet out that um, Biltmore, North Carolina, mm. in the uh, Smoky Mountains, they're going to exceed in one of their rivers, their previous crest for their river by seven feet. That's to beat that... In a river is just incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, some some rainfall totals close to two feet in part of the southern Appalachian chain. And of course, it's kind of winding down there, but still going on over towards uh, Cincinnati and Nashville. But it, th so this is a kind of a confusing graphic, but we'll kind of walk you through it. So these are literally all the hurricane landfalls. Um, let me go back to that one. All the hurricane landfalls. Um, since 1950, uh, along the Gulf Coast, there's Category 2, Category... So clearly this area is no stranger to landfalling hurricanes, right? But the odd part is that Big Bend area of Florida, just recently in the last two years, Adalia yep. and now uh, Helene, and both, both nearly in the same area, and you know, we'll, we'll bring up those tracks. So that glossy track on the left is where Helene tracked last night, and just to the right of it, Adalia from last, from last year. Just incredible stuff. And this is an area over the last couple of years, too. I think there was eight or nine major hurricanes in the last mm -hmm. few years after having quite a few years of not having a landfall. Relative falling. quiet, right? Yeah, relative quiet. And that's why we always say knock on wood, because even mm -hmm. around here, we've been lucky. And, that's right. And so we don't want to jostle anything. Yeah, I mean, it's been literally been since 1991, since Bob, since we had a landfalling hurricane here. And that, I mean, 33 years, um, yeah. you know, we always say it only takes one, it's a matter of time, and sooner or later it'll come. Yeah. Hopefully this year, and there's still time this year, the hurricane season is still, uh, you know, still has a couple of months left in it, but at least as of now, nothing. Nothing imminent. Nothing anywhere near the East Coast. Even longer since we've had a major hurricane too. Correct. Yeah, well, yeah, 1950s. Carol and the 54, yeah. or yeah, Carol and Edna. Um, but turning to our weather, yeah. what a day today. Um, Glorious. Amazing outside. Probably yeah. the best day of the next bunch, at least for as far as the clear skies go. You can see all those clouds off to the south and west. Uh, most of those are really the outer fringes of what's left of Helene. And they're going to kind of be playing with us, with New yeah. England, over the next few days, um, sort of flirting with our area. Kind of touch and go a little bit. Yeah. Right. And so this graphic uh, we made last night basically showed this is the idea through the weekend. 
Um, through New England, there'll be times of uh, like higher thin clouds that may, may, may uh, block out the sun at times. The further south and west you go, the thicker the clouds and yep. the better chance for showers. Yeah, I think that with high pressure in place, it acts as a bit of a blockade for us. But as high pressure starts to depart, you know, these clouds, these showers will start to see a little weakness and, and try to move on in. But mm -hmm. by and large, I think the weekend forecast is mainly dry. A couple of sprinkles may creep into the picture on Sunday, but upper 60s, low 70s, we'll take it. Beautiful. I think we'll the average it, yeah. high right now is seven, either 69 or 70. So we're basically right on right on par. Yep. Um, just a great weekend for all of the fall things, which we'll get to in a minute. But okay. first off, uh, we've got a little bit of an astronomical uh, oddity coming up. Which sure. been, it's been an insane year, first of all. Yes. For astronomical things. I mean, you were witness for the solar eclipse. Yep. That was like number one. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. I also saw the Aurora Borealis. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it when it was like the huge one around right. here. I had to go to Iceland to see mine. That's okay. But That's, still. That I mean, it counts. Yeah. We had the partial lunar eclipse recently. Yep. Uh, and then and so now maybe what they're saying a naked eye comet which is a, just a fancy way of saying you may be able to see it with the naked eye right um, i'm gonna let you say the name of oh the thank comet. you yeah uh do you know it no I don't. okay no, I don't. i'm gonna say it's shushan okay shushan sean shushan sean yeah 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 i think you got it shushan sean yeah. atlas <laughs> all right um, but the deal is this this comet it has an 80,000 year orbit around our solar system and basically this it's currently making its closest pass to the sun today. Okay. And so that is why we have a chance to see it as it passes by the sun. It gets it melts some of the um, ice crystals in the comet and we get some reflection. And we, so we're, we're saying we can probably we'll probably be able to see it uh, for the next few mornings. This is right before sunrise. Uh, this weekend, um, but you really have to have an absolute clear view of the yeah. southeast horizon. I'm talking about this is just off the southeast horizon. So for our friends in the Cape, the coastline, mm -hmm. they're probably going to have one of the better opportunities to be able to see that. Right. And this is so I grabbed a couple shots. Can you find the comment there? Let me zoom in for you. So this was actually uh, last oh, night okay. from Missouri. As you can see, it's not like it's not like you're going to walk outside and be like, holy moly. It's not, you know, you got to kind of look for it. And sure. this is another one, I believe, from Flagstaff. Uh, so you can see it there. So you're gonna have to you probably maybe grab a pair of binoculars just in case, but yeah. there is a legit chance uh, of seeing it with the naked eye. And actually, um, after it's gonna kind of go out of sight for about a week and then come back in the western uh, horizon at night, and I think it was around October 10th. Okay. So there may even be a better chance okay. to see it then. Awesome. Still pretty cool. Yeah, so importantly, southeast horizon. Southeast horizon. There you yeah. go. We also have a ISS flyby. That's going to be tonight from 8.13 to 8.17. This is going to be almost or directly overhead, moving northwest to southeast. If you've never seen it, it's a really cool thing. Take the kiddos outside. It's early enough that they're not messing with the bedtimes. Plus, it's the weekend anyway, right? Uh, but take them outside and check it out. It is a really cool sight to see. And speaking of the space yeah. station. We, <laughs> we have some news to share uh, that on October 11th, I'm going to be talking to... Massachusetts native Sonny Williams aboard the International Space Station. Uh, so that'll be airing right here on CBS News Boston. And we encourage you, if you are tuning in, send those questions on in to myself or Terry. We'll try to get some of the best ones and we'll offer up some viewer questions to Sunny as she's going to be spending the next few months. Yeah, she's got an extended stay up Yes, there. exactly. <laughs> I don't know what the uh, room rate is up there, but she's definitely racking up the airline miles and the uh, yeah. Hilton points. I'm really <laughs> excited for that interview. Uh, now, yeah. you got a chance to chat with some folks on the on the ISS. Was that last year? No, that was that oh. was actually like four years okay. ago. Okay. Yeah. Mean, listen, time's fine. But, it it but, really is. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like a, I would say once in a lifetime, but now twice in a lifetime opportunity for you to chat. Uh, yeah, I mean, to to talk to astronauts in space is really, Pretty really amazing. special. So yeah. I've been really blessed to be able to do that. I really love that interview. Uh, now looking back, Victor Glover, Dr. Mm. Katie Rubin, right. both of them are in the Artemis program. And that is our uh, return to the moon. Mm. And if they are selected, they would be the first woman, yep. the first African-American to actually step foot on the moon. That would be really incredible to have talk. To yeah. them and and we'll what was the date of that again for the for your chat oh october, october i thought you're talking to the previous no, no, one no, no, i'm no. like i'm not that october 11th on, on our stream yeah that'd yes. be great uh let's get back to the to our fun weekend though yeah um this is definitely in my mind like the first weekend of probably four or five in a row where 
people are thinking fall, they're yeah. thinking fall foliage, they're going apple picking, maybe picking pumpkins. Um, and so I feel like the weather is really important for the next four or five weekends. A lot of folks may be heading north this weekend. Yep. Um, and again, it could be it could it could be better. We could have a few less clouds, but I mean, 70 degrees and partly sunny skies. I think the important thing is mainly dry. Exactly. When, when you can yeah. be mainly dry, that's all that matters. The conversation going into fall that I had with Jim Salji, mm -hmm. our fall foliage expert, he said the foliage is a backdrop to all the other amazing Absolutely. things that are fall. No doubt. And that was such a great way to put it, and, and that really stuck with me. Here's our average peak foliage, where we usually see peak arriving late September to early October as you go up to the north, the stem of the Green Mountains up into the Northeast Kingdom, northern New Hampshire, and then as you go into Maine. We're seeing that sort of come to fruition, uh, where we actually have uh, some some peaks showing up as you go into even Brattleboro. So yeah, really we'll show that. Color. We'll show the current map in a bit. But okay. um, this was more. So this information is partially from Jim Salgi as yep. well. I mean, we had the foliage outlook was really good about a, a, say a, a month to six yeah, weeks ago, yeah. and then all of a sudden it didn't rain for like four weeks. Yes. So that has sort of uh, brought on a little bit of a stress for some of the trees. It also was really warm in parts of uh, mm -hmm. for part of September. So. The forecast went from amazing to it should be pretty good. Um, and we're starting to see now some of that color coming on. Um, what we really need is to get back to the regular fall weather. We need some right. of those cool, crisp nights to really bring on the good color. What we call like the big diurnal changes, mm -hmm. right? The, the 40s overnight, the 60s and 70s in the afternoon for that leaf to slowly change into exactly. all the beautiful colors. So yeah, so it, as we can see, like some of these, the, the weather this time of year really does have an impact and drought or, you know, heat stress are a few of the things that came on a little bit towards the end of August and early September or so. Yep stress out the trees a little bit. But again, uh, I do think for the most part this year is going to be a pretty good one. I Absolutely. Think we have our yep. current map coming up here. Perfect. I, I love little, little kind of hidden gem, mm. Saturday mornings, Brattleboro. They have a farmer's market there. Oh, wow. It's a phenomenal farmer's market. And then after you go there, there's a chocolate and cheese shop and the name's escaping me, mm. but it's right there in Brattleboro. Mm. If you're looking for a little road trip tomorrow, do it. It is gonna okay. be a great day to do so. Brattleboro is showing some pretty good color, high color in those areas. Yeah. And then you can just take Interstate 91 up to the north if you really wanted to see some peak color up towards uh, the Northeast Kingdom, Northern Vermont. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, right now I think it's the highest elevations that are near peak, right. so you go up to the, the, the greens, the whites, even the Northern crest of Maine. It's really sort of moderate to high color in most of that area, but right. some of the highest peaks are peaking. I think probably another four to seven days in this map will be much more, there'll be much more peak going on for Vermont and New Hampshire. So maybe next weekend could be the best weekend to go up north, although this weekend, not bad at all. And it might be one of those situations that you have to look at the forecast too, because right. weekends turn crazy True. as you are driving. You'll run into traffic jams like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so if there is a nice day in the extended forecast and you know, you might have a sick day or two, Terry, don't listen. No, 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 no. <laughs> you look fine to me. <laughs> no so, so I won't be taking any sick days, but if there is a day looking ahead, I mean, this is our forecast for the lakes and mountains. As we talked about a little earlier, the fringes of those clouds probably won't reach as deeply into right, right. the lakes, Lake Winnipesaukee, as you go into the White Mountains. Yeah, just some high clouds. I mean, this forecast is just about as good as it gets for yeah. the last weekend of September up north. I mean, and there's really no guarantee, like you said, you might say, oh, you know what? It's not quite peaking yet. I'll wait a week or two. Well, next weekend or the following weekend, maybe a windswept rainstorm. Exactly. If we get any sort of major storminess this time of year and a lot of the leaves fly off the trees and you might miss out. So if you're sitting around doing nothing this weekend, I don't think driving up north would be a bad idea. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, think, I think this is actually our last foliage graphic, but um, I just want to reiterate that um, the, the hurricane is not, we are not going to experience any of it up here, just mm -hmm. some of the outer fringes, but we'll be certainly thinking about uh, those folks down in Florida and yeah. certainly uh, the folks experiencing the flooding in parts of the Appalachians. And we're going to probably get quite a bit more information of who was impacted. We've already seen a couple of fatalities from this hurricane. Yeah. The full picture has yet to be Absolutely. seen from yeah. this uh, as rescuers go down there. Um, so stay tuned to WBZ this evening at 5 and 6 o'clock. We'll have some reports from the coastline there. Um, Enjoy the weather in the meantime. Enjoy the weekend. Are you, you, I know you have a busy weekend. Yeah. Are you doing any fall things? 
Uh, fall things. I actually have a pretty fun weekend, if, if I can indulge you the can. viewers. Tomorrow I'm going to be emceeing the uh, New England Hemophilia Association annual run walk at uh, Pro's Farm uh, on the foothills of Curtis. the Blue Hill Observatory. So that's going to be fun. We raised $300,000 oh. for the association there. And then on Sunday afternoon, I'm going to be heading over to Cambridge for their STEM festival. So if you see me out and about, say hi. Uh, we're going to have a news crew there. And okay. so maybe you'll make it on TV. Um, but yeah, definitely don't be afraid to say hi. Enjoy Excellent. it, whatever Excellent. it may be. Yeah, I'm thinking about heading up to um, Wachusett Mountain for a little hike. And okay. I think there's an Oktoberfest going on at their brewery there. So uh, that's probably where I'm heading. You don't need any excuse for a pumpkin. A I'd, pumpkin. I, I'd beverage. Yes. Yeah, beverage, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love uh, anything pumpkin. And I, start, yeah. I started back a month ago. So, you know. He says it was a month. It was like June. OK. <laughs> Listen, when, when pumpkin comes out, I'm all in. I can't get enough. No, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Whatever Terry and Jacob's Whatever Weather Chat. Uh, we'll, we'll try to do these more often, but in the meantime, have a great day, everyone.